Hi guys, welcome back to another GGF video. And yes, today I'll be taking a look at the Lankel 2 from Leanne Lee. Now this video is way overdue, so finally it is here. This is gonna be a bit of a long one. I'll go over everything you need to know about this chassis, and I'll cover the extra additional parts you can buy for this case. Leanne Lee have a few extras like an RGB strip, anti-save bracket, vertical mount, and so on. So let's jump in and check it out. But before that, this video is brought to you by ASRock and their new X299 Tai Chi CLX motherboard, featuring out-of-the-box support for Core X series processors, a 13-phase power design with two large heatsinks for VRM cooling, and the inclusion of ASRock's new integrated flexible I.O. shield. A variety of connectivity can be found, including next-gen 20 gigabit USB 3.2 Type-C, Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN, as well as Ada 211 AX Wi-Fi 6, while based on ASRock's refreshed Tai Chi design for that unique look. Learn more in the link below. Lian Li introduced the Lancool range to their lineup roughly 10 years ago with the Lancool PCK62. Not much happened to the series after that until just over a year ago we saw the launch of the Lancool 1 and today we bring you number 2 from this lineup. The idea behind the Lancool 2 is to bring consumers an affordable mid tower chassis packed with features. First impressions of the chassis are extremely good and I quite like the overall look. The Lancool 2 is available in either white or black. Nearly the entire chassis is made from SGCC steel, including the front panel. I'm really glad they didn't go with plastic here. Dimensions come in at 495 high, 229 wide, and 478 deep, so not the largest case around. The only have gone with a two segments of design, with side panels being separate to the bottom panels. I think this not only looks good, but having only tempered glass side panels for the top means you don't see any messy hard drive or PSU cables at the bottom, and these panels block out this area. Both tempered glass side panels are 4mm thick, have about a medium tint, are on hinges, and can be removed if required. Both panels are made from steel, easily drop down for internal access, and can be removed via a few screws. All panels are secured via strong magnets, but there is no way to fully secure them in. The built-in RGB is also included in the Lancool 2, which brings ambient light from the inside of the front panel. I think this looks pretty good and allows for setups using high-performance non-RGB fans, but still gives you that RGB at the front. Another nice touch here is the RGB front panel is toolless and cableless as well. Pressure contacts are used and I tested attaching and removing the front panel over and over for any connectivity issues and had no problems here. The bottom of the front panel has an aluminum Lian Li plaque, which is a nice touch. Controlling the front RGB is performed via the M mode switch and the C color switch via the top I.O. of the chassis. Also in regards to case I.O., you'll find an audio combo jack, two USB 3.0 and a USB Type-C port, but this is an optional extra accessory and will need to be purchased and installed. This will set you back about 12 bucks. Moving inside the Lankill 2, it is nice to see support for up to EATX motherboards, up to 280mm wide, but keep in mind depending on your motherboard layout, you may need to remove the cable management bar, but this bar is reversible, giving you some better flexibility options depending on your motherboard. Three 120mm standard black Lian Li fans are included and two optional fan spots are located on top of the PSU shroud. Plenty of cable routing cutouts can be found and I appreciate that there are EPS cutouts on both the left and the right side of your motherboard while two long cutouts can be found at the bottom for front I.O., USB, and so on. CPU cooler clearance is up to 170mm high, while VGA length is up to 390mm long. With an EK XE360 radiator installed at the front, yes, a 60mm 360 does fit, I still had roughly 330mm of clearance for GPU. We also had no issues installing wide GPUs either, so that is good to know. Now let's talk about the rear side of the chassis, and yes, this is one area I love about the Lancool 2. You won't find many cheaper offerings that come with cable covers and Lian Li have done an excellent job here. Two panels are used to cover the entire backside of the chassis and with the bottom side panel already hiding PSU cables, this all just works so well together. All we're left with are just the two SATA spots and I do like how these are not covered. Each panel is slotted into place and secured via one thumb screw. An additional plate is included which has a few mounting options and is dedicated to hold either an RGB controller or a fan hub. Moving on to storage, and I think Lian Li have done a pretty good job here. Down the bottom in the PSU shroud, you'll find an adjustable hard drive cage, which takes either three three and a half inch hard drives or three two and a half inch SSDs. This cage sits on a track and can slide left or right. For PSU and front radiator options with this cage, I'll cover this a little bit later on. A hot swap module from Lian Li can be purchased for this cage, which I think is pretty neat and will set you back about 15 bucks. Strap this on the back of the cage and now all three drives become hot swap. 
And another nice touch, if you do include this in your build, each drive sled's power and activity light now becomes active. Just to note, these lights will only come active with the hot swap backplate accessory installed and once you attach the light bars to each sled. All other storage options are on the back side of the chassis with two SSD trays behind the PSU shroud door, while two more SSD trays can be found behind the motherboard tray. All four trays are included for these locations. Power supply location is of course at the back at the bottom of the chassis and PSU length will depend on the position of the hard drive cage. With the hard drive cage in the far left closest to the PSU, there is 215mm for PSU length and with this cage all the way to the right, we now see 280mm for PSU clearance. So how does the Lankle 2 stack up in the radiator apartment? Well let's find out. Starting at the top of the chassis and kudos to Lian Lee for adding not one but two rows of radiator mounting holes. Having a set of holes to the very edge of the chassis allows the thicker radiators to be installed and helps to clear memory modules. 240 and 280mm radiators are supported in the top of the chassis. Max 240 radiator thickness is basically unlimited as it clears both my motherboard's VRM cooler as well as my Trident Z memory modules. Just to note you can't really go any taller than these memory modules or it will foul. I had about 44mm of RAM clearance using an EKXC and had 51mm of RAM clearance using a Bits Power Leviathan radiator. Max thickness for a 280 radiator is going to be tough as I couldn't even fit in my Animax 280 all-in-one as it was failing on the motherboard's VRM cooler. The radiator on this all-in-one cooler is 28mm thick. 240 radiators are probably your best option up the top. Moving on to the front, and the only have included this interesting four-way radiator bracket. This bracket is slotted in via angled grooves with two sets of grooves provided and with the bracket having the ability to be flipped allows for four mounting options. Each option provides a different mounting solution for radiators and fans. Confusing it may sound, this bracket does work well. This bracket fits up to a 360 or 280mm radiator, but the Anli do state if going with a 140mm variant radiator, it cannot be installed on the inside of this bracket, only on the outside. The amount of fitment options on this bracket are quite endless and I won't go through them all now, but having this bracket doesn't just provide you with four different thickness options for radiators, it also gives you options like radiator bracket fans, radiator fans bracket, or fans radiator bracket. The only have provided a very large cutout in the PSU shroud for decent sized radiators. I find this a common issue in mid tower cases where this cutout is never enough. Due to the amount of fitment options the front bracket will provide, I won't list them all, but I was able to install a 360 60mm thick EKXE radiator with fans at either the front or on the inside of this bracket. I could even have a push pull setup on this EKXE radiator if I remove the bottom hard drive cage. Quite impressive. Chassis ventilation I found is pretty good all around with large vented gaps at the front, while another large gap can be found at the very bottom of the front panel. Dust filters can be found at the bottom under the chassis for the power supply, as well as two on the inside of the front panel, one for each side. Interesting to note the front dust filters are coloured differently. On each side, there is a dark and a light side, and I can only assume the light side faces out for better RGB lighting. One magnetic dust filter can also be found on the top. So that's really everything about the case, so let's check out the build.
Alrighty guys, now that's basically the build there. I went with a white and black theme build. Now I did go with the white version of the chassis. Now there's just some other things I wanna cover. Now you might be wondering, great, I do get a whole heap of hardware in here. I've got the two 60 millimeter radiators and so on. But with a build like this, I was really restricted on where to put a pump and a reservoir. Now for me, it wasn't too bad because I've got a whole heap of gear, gear at the back. I can just go and grab whatever I need. But for someone like you, you probably do need more options than just lying something down in front of your beer cart. So I've done sort of, uh, sort of some designs to sort of show you what you can do if you do use uh, thinner radiators or smaller radiators, especially at the front. So say you're using a build with a standard GPU, say a 5700 XT, that is 270 millimeters long. If you do go with a 40 millimeter radiator at the front, now bear in mind, mine is 60 with a 40 millimeter radiator at the front, and that's with the bracket pushed all the way to the front of the chassis, you have roughly 90 millimeters for a res or pump combo. Now if you go even smaller again, if you go with a slim radiator at the front, they're roughly 28 millimeters thick, you'll now have 103 millimeters for a res and pump combo. So that will give you some flexibility options. Just don't think that when you do a build, it is going to look like this and you are very, very tight on space. Now I wanna cover the five extras you can buy for this chassis. I've already mentioned the USB Type-C and the hot swap uh, drive bay bracket. Now there is a vertical GPU bracket, there's an anti-sag bracket, and there is a diffused RGB strip, which I have sitting on the front here. Now starting with the vertical GPU bracket, it is pretty much just a vertical GPU bracket. It does come with a premium cable and the Landley have sort of tailored it for this chassis. Now it does come with what it looks like an extra support bar on the bottom, but I could not install that because the screws are a bit long and it was fouling on the back of my motherboard. But I don't really think you need that. I didn't use it and the sag was pretty good. I think overall the bracket worked and that's gonna set you back about 49 US dollars. Now there is the anti-sag bracket that is about roughly $10 uh, US. I've used these in a lot of my builds and I find these probably the best anti-sag brackets you can buy on the market for your GPU. They're really low profile, they're easy to install and they're just hidden out of the way. These simply just go between two of your motherboard standoffs, the center one and the bottom center one. Uh, if your motherboard standoffs use the M3, there's a CD-ROM thread or the SSD thread, I don't know why I said CD-ROM, the SSD thread, which is your M3, or the uh, thicker hard drive one, which is your UNC632. They only have included two sets of standoffs for each sizes, so you don't have to worry about not having that fit. Then you just have a bracket that goes between the two, a little right angle bar goes in, and that can slide up and down depending on what type of GPU you're using, and that, that bracket has support for two video cards as well. And once you put it in, I grabbed my saggiest GPU I had. That sounds quite strange. But yes, I grabbed my saggiest GPU I had. As you can see, this one's just shocking. Once I installed this bracket, it was 100% perfectly flat and there was no sag on the GPU at all. Now lastly is a diffused RGB strip. This is roughly 12 US dollars and this just sticks on the side here. It just sticks on by tape. And this is diffused nicely. You're not gonna see uh, individual LEDs. It's just one nice uh, long bar of light. And this also does connect into the, uh, around the back there is an extra output for the front panel control. We only have added this specifically for this strip or you can add whatever you want in there as well. It just gets controlled at the front when you control the front of the chassis. Now this has two mounting options. It can go like this to how I've done it. It can go up here and it can just shine up. You can slide it down a little bit if you don't want to see the light or if you take this off the side here where I've got it, you can flip it around and you can mount it on the underside here shooting down. So once this folds up, you can see the light coming through these little slits on the side. So that is a nice feature. But um, yeah, overall, I'm really glad Leanne have gone the route of not throwing these five extra items in, but having these as additional extras to purchase because not everyone's gonna want all five. Someone might one, someone might like two, someone might want the diffuse strip with the vertical GPU bracket, someone like that. And this gives you flexibility to uh, so, sort of tailor this case to how you like it. Now, one issue I did run into, running a in, uh, thick EK radiator at the front uh, will interfere with that cable management bar next to the motherboard, only when it's in its EATX position. Because it uh, protrudes out so wide, when it's in its EATX position, it gets pushed closer to the front of the case. So by when you have a thicker radiator coming in, this sticks out, they eventually do foul. That's only because an EK radiator is roughly 130 millimeters wide. I tried a bits power radiator that is 120 millimeters wide and that did just clear it. So your limit for radiator 
thickness is about 123 millimeters wide. That is only if you are using an EATX motherboard. Now you can completely take that cable management bar out. But the only thing I don't like is that cable management bar, just a bit that protrudes out, is pot riveted to the big rectangle uh, plate. So if you do take it out, you are left with a humongous gaping hole. Now you can leave it like that, but I think it does look a little bit messy. It would have been nice if you could just take off that little rise cable management bit just to give you some little holes under it. Now, coming down to price, you're looking at 89 US dollars for the black and 94 US dollars for the white, and that's roughly 149 Australian. Now, I think that is tremendous value for what you are getting on this chassis. Uh, just all the sort of radiator options, especially the way these side panels uh, work, it just cleans up everything nicely. So yeah, this is probably going to be my favorite case of 2019, mainly because of its value. I'm not going to choose something that's really expensive for being a top product of 2019. I don't think it's any point choosing a best product for a year or so and no one can afford it. But I think at uh, 89 US dollars, this case does fit in the budget of a lot of people. Now that moves me down to my build I would do for 2019. Now, as you can see, no, this would not be my build for 2019. Now let's go and check it out. Now this is the build here. So yes, I have stuck with the same case, of course, Lankle 2, because I am naming the Lankle 2 from the Enli my favorite case of 2019. Not just from a water cooling perspective, there are much better cases out there, but um, you will be paying more for them though, but not everyone's gonna water cool. So that's why I've gone with this sort of orientation for this build with an all-in-one cooler, uh, air-cooled video card and so on. Uh, not sort of my usual decked out crazy uh, IGB high-end water cool system because not everyone is going to be able to afford a system like that. Not everyone wants a system like that and no one wants to sort of maintain a system like that either. So when I say this is my sort of top build for 2019, it's sort of a few key components. Things like hard drives, SSD, power supply, cables. That's not really in my choice. They can all be customized and sort of uh, predefined by the user. All those things aren't really gonna impact performance. Uh, most SSDs are gonna be about the same. Cables won't do anything, fans won't really do much. So the sort of key components in this build is the case, uh, the chipset, the CPU, and the video card. Now the reason why I said chipset rather than the motherboard, I have gone with X570, but once again, the motherboard can be tailored to what you like. I've gone with the ASRock uh, PGX from the X570 range. Now that's just one of the boards I had on hand and I do like this board. Now that's not saying, I'm saying this board has to be used in this 2019 build, but that's just an option I went with. There's other boards, you got the ASRock uh, Steel Legend uh, X570, that is slightly cheaper and so on. For sort of a mid-range uh, build, no matter which uh, board you choose, you're not really gonna get much difference performance out of it. Yes, you could throw in a thousand dollar board for a build like this, or you can throw in a slightly cheaper board, and it's probably not really gonna make that much difference. Now CPU, of course, I went with the Ryzen 5 3600X. You could go with the 3600, but I preferred the 3600X. And then I've gone with, of course, the AMD Radeon 5700 XT. Now I've gone with the stock one, but once again, if you prefer a aftermarket brand uh, for better cooling and so on, yes, that is an option. But this is just sort of my baseline hardware uh, for this. And as I mentioned earlier, the case of course. But yeah, that's pretty much my system for uh, 2019. I've probably said that about a thousand times already, but yeah, and most people were probably thinking I would go with something like a water cool build or something like that, but you'd prob probably be surprised that the percentage of people who do water cool their systems out of everybody who use computers is like in the two or three percent of people. So um, yeah, it is interesting, but yeah, if you're wondering what this uh, all-in-one cooler it is, it is the Bixky uh, 360. I'll throw all the links for this build and I'll throw all the links for the other build I just did at the back there uh, in the description so everyone can check it out. But um, yeah, that's my build for this year and um, the case from the only the Lankle 2, I'll probably say is my favorite case of this year, but there has been a heap. Uh, there's been a lot of expensive ones. There's been some pretty good price ones, but I don't think anything can beat this Lankle 2. But anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank Lanley for checking this out and stay tuned for more videos.